<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Drew here at thatanxietyguy.com. I am talking to, like, I'm so excited. My friend Sarah, all the way from the UK, and Sarah and I have known each other for quite a long time. So those of you who follow my channel, my videos, have seen me work with Billy. I know Sarah just as long as I know Billy. So Sarah, thank you so much for taking Such your time. Pleasure. It's so fun, so right? I'm happy I'm, to be here. I know. I'm so happy to be catching up with you. Like Sarah and I haven't spoken in a while, but um, yeah. It's You're really always great. in really, my really heart, Drew. What's that? You're always in my heart. Oh, geez. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, Always thinking about you. So Sarah, um, got you. Uh, we were good to see you get like get into the Facebook group. That was awesome. Like not too long ago, you joined up with the rest of the crowd. Um, so that was cool to see you there. And someone had asked about there was a thread about health anxiety, and there's just so much health anxiety stuff. Yeah. And I, I have very little experience with that, but Sarah, you were nice enough to answer and and say that you had gotten past it. So I thought we could take 20, 30 minutes and just like talk about that. Cool, so yeah, yeah that would be great. So like, give me the rundown. Tell me about like your, what has health anxiety been for you for so many years? What was, how bad was it? I'm going to say probably bad, right? Okay. Yeah. It was, it was, it eventually led me to actually have a full clinical breakdown, breakdown. Like, the health and, anxiety drove me. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That was the only point through my, I mean, cause obviously I've had mental health problems for 21 years and at no point with any of the other things I've had have I actually experienced a full on breakdown. And I can't I mean, even now, when I look back to how I was then, right. I can't even I, I don't even recognize that. Per Honestly, I don't recognize that person at right. all. It, it's just like someone it was someone different. It was someone like I was literally it was it taken over controlling me at, right. in every sense. Now, what was the driver? I mean, were you in that state where you were? And I knew you back then. I mean, we were kind of communicating back in like 2008, 2009, yeah. that whole period. And I mean, were you driven by that constant scanning of your, yeah. how do I feel? How do I feel? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I, what I've learned with like over the years of having help, um, any kind of anxiety problem, right. what your brain does, it literally hones in to what you fear the most so for example there was a period of time when I feared having heart problems mm -hmm. and I can guarantee every day I'd wake up and I'd have chest pain I'd have jaw pain I'd have arm pain every single day I'd wake up and that would be the symptoms I was getting I had a fear of getting um I don't know, like a stomach cancer or something like that. And I would every day from that point, I'd be waking up with stomach pains, feeling sick. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and I, without fail, I'd be having, and then I'd have some other pain, you know, or like a bait, pain in my back, and it'd be like, oh my God, kidneys. And you can guarantee after that, I'd have kidney pain for about the, the next three or four months. Yeah. And it's just, it's, yeah. And, and, and those things were, those things felt ex extremely real to you, I'm guessing. I mean, oh, I, yeah, I kind of remember yeah. back in the, yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at you now, to be honest with you, we've been chatting for a little while before I started recording and just catching up. Like, you you seem like a different person than you were. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, yeah. I remember you were just constantly, and there was that thing of, like, well, I'm, this is never going to get better. I remember you being so adamant and saying, this is my life, it's never, ever going to get better. Yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and as it turns out, that wasn't really the case. No, no. I mean, this bit I do still struggle with, but I mean, it's literally it's taken like I've I've read so many books, you know, I've done so much research and yeah. it really just I mean, and I don't want to trivialize it because, you know, I've lived it for so many years and it <laughs> excuse me, it really sure. just come down to your thoughts. Thoughts cause anxiety. Anxiety mm -hmm. causes adrenaline to be released, which causes the physiological and physical symptoms. And therefore, and then once they start happening, then yeah. you're thinking, Shh, oh, my God, what's this? What's this? What's this? Right. What's this? Right. What's this? You know, it's right. it's a vicious cycle of like thoughts, feelings, adrenaline. Uh, you know, you, it's just... So you weren't really stuck in just generic like I have panic attacks. It no. was that and specific, like I'm having a heart attack or now yeah. I have stomach problems, now I have kidney problems. You kind of went yeah. from obsession to everything. obsession. I had everything. I had leukemia. I had, 
I had every cancer, I had brain cancer, I've had brain scans, I've had so much, you know, you name it, I've had it. And it, and um, I'll tell you in a second about, you know, when the, the breakdown happened. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I've had like every illness that I thought I've had, I've had like the tests to go along with that. Yeah. And um, but the thing is, when I actually had a real like issue last year with my blood, and they mentioned um, lymphoma as um, a possible, and I had to go and see a hematologist at that point, obviously because I'm now recovered from health anxiety. They mentioned lymph um, lymphoma, didn't even. You know, there was no like, oh my God, they've just said lymphoma, and then I'm scanning for sim, you know, am I feeling, am I looking pale, am I tired, am I this, am I that, you know, googling the symptoms of lymphoma and seeing which ones I had. Yeah. There was nothing like that. I was like, okay, whatever, we'll see what happens when I see the hematologist in a couple of weeks. So you know, it is going from how I was to, yeah, you know, now, it, it you know, th there is, you know, you can recover without a doubt. Without well, shadow, there had to be. So, so you hear a word like lymphoma, which is certainly scary to, for everybody to hear. Like, mm. do you find that you were still like, how did you handle? Because I know there are going to be people who are watching that do have legitimate health problems, not just health anxiety. People do get ill or, or have conditions too. So when you hear that, like, w were you worried? Were you scared? Were you like, like a person normally would be? It just um, didn't. Become... No, 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 really. I mean, it if I if if someone had said that to me when I was deep in the health anxiety. Right. Right. Which I would have gone, I would have gone nuts. Yeah. I can't even explain it other than Google, 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 incessant Google, constant obsessive Googling. That is what I'd have done. Yeah. When they told me at the doctors that, you know, my blood results were this, 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 it could be A, B or C, I just went. But because reality is, we'll find out in a couple of weeks. That's true. Worry, nothing you can do. Anything about it apart from make you worse. So that is astounding to hear yeah, you say. Yeah, that was honestly. And now, like I said, I've got other health problems, and they've told me, you know, something's a bit dodgy. Yeah. Okay. okay. You'll Whatever. deal with I it. I can't do anything about it. Yeah. I mean, I've got different pains now from yeah. like, the issue that I'm having. And I'm like, whatever, I can't, I'm not worrying about it. There's too much other stuff to worry about than that, you know. Yeah. It will, it's, it, you know, but the, the thing is, the difference is when you actually have a genuine health problem, mm -hmm. you handle it differently to when you perceive you have a right. problem. Right. Because the psychosomatic um, symptoms are as real as real yeah. symptoms. Sure. But, but because you're thinking and thinking and thinking about the the psychosomatic symptoms, they are just worse, and they are worse than I could potentially, potentially say they are worse than you know real symptoms. I, I've because heard that you said. make them much bigger. Yes, I, I've heard that said. Yes. What they actually are, you blow yeah. them because you're overthinking it completely. You just make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until everything's involved. You know. Yes. Yeah. I've heard it described as like making a movie. So like, you know, sometimes there are forest fires and they are bad. But in a yeah. movie, when they make a movie about a forest fire, when you can imagine any forest fire, oh, you're God, it's yeah. huge. It was, it's yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. much worse. Yeah. It's so taking I, I, out. It's taking out entire cities, which is right, basically what which it doesn't does with... really happen. But if no. you let your imagination go, you can make exactly. That. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think the big. So let, let me ask you another question then. When you're in the thick of that. So you were worried about specific elements, of course, and I'm, I'm guessing in that constantly scanning, how do I feel thing? Were you, so you were incessantly Googling and searching, which you've said, and a lot of people struggle with that. Like they must Google. They have a hard yeah. time not Googling. Yeah, yeah. What about checking? Like I, I, we have people who are constantly compelled to check their blood pressure or their heart rate or their blood sugar. Did you do those things? Well, okay. When, when I had my breakdown, mm -hmm. should I tell you how that started? Good, good. You say, tell me what you talk about, whatever you want to talk about. Okay, so 2011, I had a lot of stress. I was having problems with my boyfriend. My cat had just been put down. I had a really bad chest infection. And I went to, and I had money problems. So there was a lot of stress going on with my life. And then I had the flu jab, which was, you know, perfectly normal for me. The flu jab, I get, I have asthma. So, you know, I'm given the flu jab. Right. Anyway, for some reason, I went home and I Googled the flu jab. And 
it said in rare cases it can cause something called Gillian Barry syndrome or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. It had that. So it, it can cause that. Within three seconds, my brain had taken that, right? It was in my brain. I was like, oh my God. So then I was Googling that illness and I was like, oh my God, it causes paralysis, it causes this, you know, locked in, yeah. you know, you can't do so a few weeks later i was like starting to get weird things happening right with you know i was feeling a bit of weakness and then that progressed into ms so yeah i I had got ms right so and that wasn't good enough because that wasn't good enough i was googling more and i was like getting all these other symptoms like weird i was like I, i could hear myself slurring and i could like i could see I could actually see atrophy happening in my hands. I've got really skinny hands, look. But in my head, I could see my hand, my hands were atrophying. And yes. then I, I could, I couldn't swallow properly. I was choking. And um, and then I couldn't get up the stairs properly. And really weird things. Anyway, so then it just manifested into Lou Gehrig's disease, possibly the worst motor neurone disease you could. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that point, I had got Lou Gehrig's disease. I was going to the doctors four or five times a day with my new symptoms. And I've spent literally 24 hours. OK, this is really bad. I either spent 24 hours Googling. And when you said about the checking, I wasn't just checking. I was doing neurological tests on myself all day, constantly. I was holding things up with my fingers to make sure I wasn't losing my strength. I was standing on my tiptoes. I was walking on my heels. I was doing like this all day long, like to see my, and I was like doing checks with, yeah, yeah, that. And I was doing this and I was like moving my jaw from side to side. I was doing tongue checks to see if I hadn't got like ALS coming in my mouth. Yeah. And that was like that for eight weeks constantly checking and I was even getting my son at that point who was 13 to do the checks alongside with me and I was like Samuel Samuel get books get books and I'd get like the biggest book he'd got and I'd like hold it in my hands to see the string and if I dropped it I'd then be like oh my god I just dropped it that must be and then that would even be even worse because then I could see myself that you know my strength was going and I do like there's a there's a test that they do at the bottom of your foot to make your feet yeah. curl, your toes yeah. curl. Yeah. Hoffman's is it? I know this Hoffman's is one of them. Hoffman's yeah, side right. or something. Anyway, and like the you know all your reflexes. So I was getting run 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 your feet up your legs. That yes, one. Yes. Yeah yeah. 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 All that crap. Anyway, so that was all that. And in the end, I was like going so mental the doctor was like looking at me every time I went it's like Sarah you've just got to stop it you've got to stop this you're you're gonna make yourself really ill so in the end I was like I had um, a nerve conduction test where they stuck needles you know to make sure you know where the um if your nerves are working anyway I was getting all my symptoms in this arm my right arm and um I had this nerve conduction test and he only did like needles in my left side Okay. and in my shoulder so anyway bear in mind i'm i'm absolutely 10 out of 10 crazy at the not crazy but you know just, i understand obsessed yeah i don't want to like i don't want to like make people angry by using the term crazy but i'm using no, it myself no. right. yeah i was i was completely insane at this point anyway the, the, the hospital was about 25 minutes half an hour away i got halfway home and i was like just said to my mum he didn't do it right he didn't do the test right. He didn't do my bad arm. He didn't do my bad arm. So I made my mum turn around, go all the way back. I literally stormed. OK, because I'm like having a breakdown at this point. I stormed into the yeah. consulting room where he was seeing somebody else. He's already doing like seeing another patient. And I've got, you didn't do the skin test right. Like this. Okay. Yeah. Because I am that worried because... You know, this is how bad health anxiety is. I was that convinced I'd got ALS. Yeah. And he hadn't done the bad arm, the defective arm. Right. He was so going to diagnose it. me. So, right. yeah, I was going to die. I was going to die. And I'd literally planned my funeral. 
I had planned how I was going to have my bed downstairs. What, you know, I'd planned all that. Yeah. Anyway, so I walked in, I swore at him and I was escorted out. Wow. I was escorted out of the hospital. Okay. Well, I. Because you can't go in and shout at people. It's just. It's right. You, 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 you kind of can't do that. I get it. Yeah. But anyway. So, so that. Okay. And that kind of. Keep, keep going. I'm, it seems I'm, like you're more. I'm mortified thinking about it now. I can see it on your face. I can see it on your face. Like, how could I have been that way? Right. Well, I was. I was. Because I was having a breakdown. And literally, yeah. I, I'd sit at home. And if I wasn't Googling, this is this is really bad. I'd sit in the bath as far away from the laptop as I could be. Can't have a laptop in the bath. And I'd no. sit in the bath from as soon as Sammy went to school, nine o'clock in the morning to when he come home at three o'clock in the afternoon, because I didn't want to be anywhere near my electronics. And I would sit there and I would self-medicate with brandy. Yeah. And I, I don't what... drink. I don't drink. I literally drank for that eight weeks. Yeah. It was either I'm drinking or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kill myself. It was that bad. It was either, yeah. you know, I was so far in it. And so, but you would literally fill the tub with water and sit in the tub. Literally. You could all not, day. you could yeah. not hold something that was plugged yeah. in. Yeah, all day. Okay. And, and all is day. that, so let me ask you a question. Let's follow that through. Is that, so that stopped you from being able to check and Google yeah. and Google and Google. Yeah. yeah. And do all what? this, do all these physical checks that would yeah. drive me into. Do you know what? I just have to say quickly one night, right? It was half past 11 at night and I stuck my tongue out and my tongue looked wonky. It didn't look like it was pointing straight, right? Okay. I phoned up my mum and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, my tongue's not straight, my tongue's not straight. And I'm obviously convinced I've got Lou Gehrig's disease. And I said, my tongue's not straight. She's like had to drive from her house, which is like 15 minutes away, half past 11 at night, to come and check my tongue. To wow, see okay. that my tongue, and that wasn't the only time she'd done that. She did that for something else, for like another one of the tests that I'd done that was I was seeing as wrong. But yeah. she came out about two, two times, I think, really late at night to check my symptoms. And my tongue, oh, honestly, I see my tongue was not straight. Yeah. But that's not even a sign of ALS. No, but it didn't matter, though, because you're not thinking rationally in any way. No. Obviously, you can look back now and say it was completely and utterly irrational. But I know. at, at it the was. time, it seemed very real, I'm sure. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was. that was it. The tongue thing was the last, yeah, you know, it was yeah. a nail in the coffin for me. That was it. I was I was, I was gonna. I was so an I, absolute gonna. I think um, like so many people that are going to watch this and you've seen some of the comments in the group and, and the discussion that goes on, I think. Yeah. You know, that's did it. Does anybody worry about this? Does anybody worry about that? I don't know if I've heard of a story and I cannot thank you enough for being so honest and open about this mm. where I don't know, like you're you're addressing just about every checking and and reassurance seeking behavior that I've yeah. ever heard. So you went down that all that road. So. But now you're sitting here and you actually yeah. have dealt with some real actual health issues. And yeah. like you could not look more relaxed and like, no, like I'm fine. not worried about it. So how did you get the million dollar question? How did you get from in the bathtub, you know, sequestered from your electronics <laughs> drinking brandy to here to here? OK, so I had the nerve conduction test and I went okay. back to the doctors. So they called me in and at this point. They, the, the doctor was having to be chaperoned because I was so crazy. They didn't know what my behavior was going to be like. Right. So there was always someone in there for the doctor's safety, which was. I understand. I, yeah, I, I know, get it. Yeah. Anyway, so they got the results of the, the test, this nerve conduction test. And they said, Sarah, there was absolutely nothing wrong with your muscles. There's no sign of anything. OK, there's no sign of any kind of muscle wasting or whatever the, the, the big long words they use. Right, Degeneration, right. I think it is, of muscles right. or something like that. There's nothing. So all you have is and they did say I've got a problem with my spine. Um, th yeah, it's just like the, the, the um, spine is just slightly crushing on one another. <laughs> right. yeah, sure. No big deal. Right, so, right. Radiculopathy it's called in my C6 and C7 part of my spine. Anyway, it just causes okay. pain. Um, so there was like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. And they said, right. And they sat down. They were so angry with me. They were so 
really like yeah. they said right you've got to stop coming to the doctors four times a day you can't do that anymore if you do we're going to have to get you sectioned because you're going to end up killing yourself right and okay. they were the exact words and they said you either go or you at least try some medication or we will have to section you okay they were my options death sectioned or medication you had, had no choice yeah oh my god and oh, i forgot another sign the symptom that i was getting because i'll get on to in a second i had constantly had this internal vibration my whole body was buzzing internally 24 hours a day like i was holding on to a pneumatic drill my whole body yeah. was vibrating constantly from the minute i went to bed the second I woke up it was constantly just vibrating anyway so i took the pills i was like well, i'm not going to go into mental home because no yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah and okay and I was like I don't really want to die if I haven't got Lou Gehrig's disease I don't really want to die so I'm gonna have to try this yeah and I mean for me it was like the only way to get I'm not saying people can't do it without medication I because because I've, I've had periods of being off medication and right. it didn't come back so I know without right. medication it yeah. has gone but, um, I, but I you got to that, that point where there was really no choice no, I had no choice, no choice, yeah. no choice whatsoever, because quite frankly, having four appointments a day, I was just, and yeah. they had to see me because they knew the state I was in. So people were being pushed out because I was so bad. Right, right understood. Anyways, so I took the pill and I was still getting what? this like vibration thing. Yeah. I was like, hmm, hmm. Perhaps I do have Lou Gehrig's disease like this, yeah, and it yeah. crept back in. Didn't matter that they told me I hadn't. I was like, well, I still got this really weird buzzing feeling throughout my body. But eventually, within I reckon I don't know two, three weeks, it's, it started to go away. It went away. So what, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what what medication did they give you? Because people will ask this. Um, do you even remember? Was it antidepressant? Yes, yeah, citalopram. Okay. Escitalopram, Cipralate. Right. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was, was only like five mil, five mil. It was yeah. smallest dose. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think at that point, when, when you're actually having a breakdown and you're rocking and you're literally scratching your skin off yes. because you don't know what else to do, you know, I, literally, I sat there in the corner of my sofa downstairs scratching my skin off and people just, like my, sat, my sister came out and she sat there sobbing because she didn't know yeah, well, how to help what you. to do. Because yeah, I just, my whole body was just sores and scratches and like pulling my hair right. out. I, I was so bad. And it was just so, awful. Yeah, it sounds like a horrific experience. And, you know, I'm so happy that you're not in that place anymore. <laughs> So, so they, you have, you're confronted with this hard, this choice, like you will, you know, you're going down a very dark path or we have to section you, which you don't want to do, which in the U S just to explain that that would be admission to a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and you don't want to go down that road. So you start no. taking this antidepressant and within a few weeks, I'm guessing you begin to change. Mm. Yes. So and depression lifted for a start. Right. So your depression lifts, and, and they, it does do that. It certainly does do that. And yeah. and you so that obsession antidepressants often used for obsessive compulsive disorder and yeah. so your obsessive thoughts begin but the key was your thoughts begin to change because of oh the, god yeah yeah I wasn't and I wasn't, suddenly I wasn't symptoms focused don't, on it yeah, yeah I wasn't right. it wasn't in my head 24 hours a day right. because I know all through like since I've like had health anxiety yeah. it was it was always there in the background regardless of what I was doing it's like oh what's that what's that twinge yeah. you know and and then it would manifest from there it'd be anything it'd be like oh i've got oh you know got, could be anything yeah. a bit, my glands feel a bit weird you know yeah. and it'd be like anything and it would yeah but it, that, those you know get a twinge and you know i didn't think anything of it that was it you know i didn't yeah. think of it whatever do nothing do nothing <laughs> so okay so let's let's uh <laughs> so they, they give you this antidepressant and, and did you continue to take it so you said you stopped taking it and it, mm. the health anxiety did not come back no problem. Sorry, no. it's okay Sorry, no, it didn't. yeah i took it for yeah. um from 2012 to 
2017. Five years I took it. Okay. Yeah, and it that was wasn't even a, it wasn't even a thing. You know, it wasn't even it wasn't even in my head at all at any point right. of that the, the, any of it. And okay. then I stopped taking it because um, I didn't need it. You know, and I was having an operation and um, I just didn't feel that I needed it. So I came yeah. off it just before the operation and, you know, no, and, no. and, and I, because we're having an operation also is a bit like, mm. yeah. but there was no like, I didn't even, there was no worry there either. Well, I think, you know, what starts to happen is, you know, once you're free of that obsessional thinking, now yeah. you get to a place where you can rationally look back at yourself and say that was wrong. And uh, yeah, but hang on a minute, I don't wrong because well, wrong would imply that you know uh, you, it, you yeah I would I wouldn't say wrong incorrect just, or inaccurate. Yeah, wrong. yeah, yeah not wrong. You, and, and you're right, that's not the good is, category. Yeah, because your brain is so like anxious. Yes. Constantly, um, yeah. it's just and it just it's just you're just consumed that's the only yeah. way you can well, that's the only way i can describe it you're just consumed with all this these negative thoughts that just manifest and yeah and it's literally it starts off with a thought that's it that's all it is it's a thought and thoughts are harmless that's true well now you can say that so now you're in a place where you know without the antidepressant you can dismiss that thought and like well that's it's a, just a thought it's harmless it's or you might not even have the thought now it sounds like no no i don't have them anymore no yeah yeah no. so i i think the takeaway here is like that is about the most extreme case of health obsession and anxiety that I, i've run across there may there may be worse but but here you are like upright and smiling and relaxed and talking <laughs> about it like it's just like you were like it's a different person like it yeah. happened to somebody else yeah. you know and, yeah. and i think you know once you were freed from that cycle of obsession it sounds like you you were able to not go back into it it just oh, doesn't yeah. Yeah. yeah no it's not even it's not even on my radar yeah even not being on medication it's not it's not yeah it's just not, not there yeah. not there so like you know regardless maybe you had to take extreme me measures but you so here was like this crippling, life-altering, crushing obsession and health anxiety that is now not a thing. Yeah. So for anybody who's watching, who is wanting to Google or check their blood pressure and that sort of stuff, like, you know, even somebody who was much worse off than maybe you, and I think, Sarah, you probably described yourself as, as a pretty extreme case. Is yeah, like, look that's, at, that's look quite at the, bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at the smile. I mean, and, and, and sharing that, like, I cannot even tell you, like, how I know it's going to help a tremendous number of people. So I, I so appreciate you doing that. Oh, yeah, I did used to do the blood pressure as well. Did they used to do that to check blood pressure? Yeah. I used yeah. to do my blood pressure, yeah. Because I've got really low blood pressure. And I used to, oh, my God, it's so low. And yeah. It, and, I mean, the thing is, again, I'm not a doctor. If it's low, what am I going to do about it? Nothing. Because I don't right. live close to a hospital. I'm not going to call out an ambulance for low blood pressure. Yeah. So I'm just going to sit there with my feet up in the air. <laughs> But, but I think the difference is now you can look rationally and say, but, what I mean, was I going to do anyway? There, yeah, but even going back to the point of when I was like obsessively doing it, yeah. what was I going to what was I going to do with that information? Yeah. Thinking now, looking back, what was I going to do with that information? Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing I could do. Like, okay, it's 96 over 40. That is really low. But what am I going to do now? Nothing. Nothing. Because I can't do anything about it, can I? But what I, but then I would have been, oh my God, it's so low. You know, I need to go to the doctor. I need to find that, and I would have phoned up the doctor. And right, right. You know, I was, I was even doing like a, the diabetes insulin, doing my blood check, Check and blood. I find up my doctor. I don't even have it, and I find up the doctor once because it was really low, and it's like Sarah, it's fine. I was like, yeah, but it's like it's like four point because our numbers are different. Yeah, Here, yeah. The range is like four point or about 4.9 to 7 is normal yeah and mine was like four i was like oh my god i'm sure i'm gonna die and yeah. i find up the doctor is like just stop it sarah just stop just stop it you yeah. don't have to open. i was like yep yeah, i've had like six glasses of water today i'm really it's like this was when i was having my breakdown so right. just drop it just drop it there's nothing yeah. you're fine but then yeah you you don't have the ability to just drop it in no, that, in that no, state. no. Rash, rational, rational thinking didn't yeah, out the exist. 
for yeah, exactly from right. December the 1st to February the 14th is when I took my first antidepressants, Valentine's Day. And so it was a it was a really long time of just I mean, that was that was the worst. But I mean, obviously, it went for years before that. But that yeah. was the pinnacle of it all. That is a long road that you went down. So I think yeah. in the end, and again, you know what? I think it's a, it's a valuable story for people to hear and the way you came out of it and did what you had to do. And and now you're yeah. sitting here so naturally. I, I think, uh, and you know, we can, you can feel free to, you don't have to answer anything you don't want, but I know people are also going to ask like, what, uh, you know, is there any other anxiety issue that's still lingering? Because people are going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, agoraphobia. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, but, yeah, that's but that that's two that, separate issues. Yeah, I've oh, got completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, like I, I mean, I said to you before. I mean, some things people can overcome easier than mm -hmm. others. I mean, I've had friends that have like, like overcome agoraphobia, but still struggle with health anxiety. Sure, sure. You're the other so, way. You know, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's it's, and I can sit and go. Yeah, I've recovered from health anxiety, but I still struggle with agoraphobia. Yeah. But I'm not anywhere near as bad as I was with that either. I mean, because when, like, I don't know if it's when I was speaking to you or just before I was speaking to you, I was literally trapped in my my down. I was trapped in the lounge downstairs. I, I couldn't even get to the. I couldn't even get upstairs to the toilet on my own. Yeah, I remember. Do you know what I mean? I had to call people home to take me to the toilet. Yeah, so I've come a long way since being yeah. you, trapped you, you, in my front room, being yeah. taken to the toilet upstairs. You never looked like this, like happy, relaxed. Like you never. When I when I was I was so dinner, stressed. Never. You were never. You never were just chatting like this ever. I never saw you like this. So no, it's I, really no, great because I was always constantly like ah, in yeah. my head, like going. It's yeah, always yeah. something. Now I don't have much in my head, to be honest. There's not so, much going on out there. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I prefer it like this. This is easy. It's this better. Like, well, it's, sure, it's better when you're not upset and like constantly in your own head. No, so, no. Yeah. Ha having come as far as you did and getting past that crippling health anxiety and even being so improved with your other anxiety issues, mm. you know, maybe it's not, not necessarily beyond ag agoraphobia, but like, what do you think the outlook is? I mean, you exhibited a tremendous, you got yourself positive. out of that. Like, I'm very. I mean, I'm currently. I'm having therapy again now, and yeah. I see an amazing therapist, and she's only the only one I've ever like clicked with. And she, it's like going in and chatting to a friend. Yeah. And we sit and talk about like life. We talk about my anxiety. We talk about all that kind of stuff. And it's just. And even last week, I've just read a book, and I read the book, and I was like, oh my god, it's one. It was one of those epiphany moments where he's like, oh my god. I get it. I finally get it. I actually get it, yeah, you know, yeah. and and it was it was um, after you, you know, I watched the do nothing. I was like, oh, my God, that's what Drew said. And, I and, I and I, yeah, and I went and saw my therapist and I spoke to her about it. And I was like, oh, my. she goes, well, actually, Sarah, that's what I've been telling you for like. Yeah, a while. <laughs> I was but, like, okay. yeah, but perhaps I needed to see it in black and white in front of me. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, there was a time when I used to go and see her and I'd sit there and panic, you know, I'd be sitting there shaking and I don't have that anymore. You know, there's lots of there's lots of areas, that, you know, I, I think that perhaps I might struggle with. Mm -hmm. But there's other areas that I know are going to be fine. And and that is basically it's it's and I'm going to like kind of, I don't want to trivialize it, but it does all come down to your th thoughts. It's that's true. That and is, I don't think you're that trivialized. That is the trivialized. bottom line. It's your yeah, thoughts. It, it, it's your it, thoughts it. that create all this crap that we deal with. Yeah. And even and even like when it's you know it, when you're having a panic attack out of the blue, it's not out of the blue because most of the time we're anxious about something. Yes. And your body can't be anxious without it having to expel itself somehow. And That's true. And that's when you have like a out of the blue panic attack, but it probably isn't because you know God knows it's, what other things have been going on in your right. life that creates this. It's but, never but really. Now I know this. Yeah. yeah, I know this now, and I know that none of nothing's gonna hurt me. And I also read something that's very interesting that I'm gonna share. When like when you have a panic attack and it feels absolutely horrible, 
the the worst it can possibly feel it's never going to get any worse than that because that first release of adrenaline is as bad as you're going to feel you may think it's going to feel worse that you're going to get worse you're going to get worse but it isn't that first hit of adrenaline is as bad as it's going to get it's the worst it knows how to do it yeah. is the worst. Yeah. yeah, and it can only come down from there. I mean, you can keep it going at that level if you like, let, if you allow it. Yeah. But it will never reach that point of the first bit where you go, oh, I'm gonna die. That's yeah. it. That is it. That is the level it's gonna get. That, and you could, like I say, you can continue for a little bit, or you can just go, go on then, kill me. <laughs> oh, good God! If I, you do not even know, I'm just gonna flat it like this. I cannot believe I'm hearing. You say these just things. Just kill me. Yeah, I just, it, just kill me I, if it wants. Don't come on. <laughs> there were times in the past that I just wanted to shake you because I knew this was in you. And like, here it is. You yeah. Are, you may say that you're still agoraphobic, but you are flat out at the top of my success story list. Absolutely. Because <laughs> to know like where you were back in those days and yeah. the things you used to say and the way you would describe yourself as this is it. I'm just, you yeah. literally wrote a blog entitled I'm agoraphobic. That was the name yeah. of your blog. Too bad. Yeah. This is what I am. Yeah. And yeah. wow, what a huge, huge difference in you. Yeah, I can't I mean, even believe it. it. I know, it's just like, it's, I mean, it's gonna, it, you know, it's hard work. And I'm not gonna say yeah. at no point I'm gonna go, oh my God, I can't do, you know, I'm having a, you know, a moment and I don't know if I can do this. And perhaps I'll sit in my house for another three months. Yeah. But, but that's what it is. It's always gonna be a roller coaster, isn't it? We Absolutely. Have, you yeah. have a condition, it's not gonna be plain it's, stains. It's, it's never you know, straight it's, up. Yeah, this isn't yeah. fucking Disney World, excuse me. It's not Disney World, is it? It's not going to be, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's totally fine. Sorry, it's not Disney World. We're going to have peaks and troughs, but yeah. it's just going, I so can't, good. you know, and I keep, and I keep, like, for the last couple of weeks, I keep putting myself in positions where, you know, I know would make me panic. You know, I walk further than I could or I should be able to do, and I'm, like, doing yeah. it. I'm, like, walking. I'm, like, come on, then. You know, mate, come on, come on, I'm waiting for you. Yeah. And I'm like, and I feel a bit like disheartened when it doesn't happen because I'm like, come. because I wanted to prove to myself that, you know, I can handle it. But so, 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 so impressive. I can't even begin to tell you. Like, this is amazing. It's really great. Really great. So, <laughs> thank and, you so I mean, much. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend it's like, you know, it's, it's, it isn't easy, but, you know. It's not easy. I'm it's not, not going to give up. Easy. I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I've had 21 years of it. You know, I think I think I've done my bit now. Yeah, I, I think you have. I think you have. Wow, this is yeah. so great. So 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 great. I can't even begin to tell you. Like I am just bubbly. So um, really great, really great. Well, I have anything else you want to add? I mean, I appreciate you giving me 40 minutes of your time. So great. But uh, just if anybody wants to contact me, then. Just so great. Yeah, just talk to me. I mean, I'll talk to anybody about it. So if they yeah. need to know anything else or I've missed something else, just, you know, message me, whatever. It's fine. Do you still have a channel on YouTube? Yes, yeah. Is it active? Um, Do you still post? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Okay. Um, I'll link it. You send me the link. I'll put it yeah, in the description. Yeah, I will do. Yeah, I can't <laughs> I can't remember it, what That's it fine. Is. Send me the link. I'll, I'll link it in yeah, the description it so you guys can check I do, out. I do frequently post on there, yeah. Yeah. Are any of your old videos from back in the day still there? Is yeah, the same all now? there. Everything's still oh, there. Oh, then we must. Yes. Yeah, like everything's still there. One example of a tremendous turnaround from yeah. one state to well, another. I, yeah, yeah. why well, am I agoraphobic? Or I am agoraphobic. Like, oh, God. And yeah. I'm so like, and my personality back then is just sort of like, oh, my God, you're so boring, girl. Which is, <laughs> where is it? Oh, God. That's I'm, rough. I'm, a, I'm a lot older now, and I think perhaps I'm a lot wiser. Well, that happens. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the benefit of a few extra years. I get it. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. few extra wrinkles, a few more gray hairs. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more gray hair. No, uh, me. Okay. That's me. Oh, you're talking I, about you? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah I have to dye it. This isn't natural. This is dyed. Oh, you're not supposed to give your secrets away like that. Oh, you know I don't, that. <laughs> don't care. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Like this has been so, so, so great. And maybe we'll chat again. Like yeah, please, when yeah. You're, been, when you're out and about. You know? Yeah. Okay. So much fun. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're very, very welcome. I'm gonna hit the stop recording button, and that'll that'll kill it. So guys, thanks. It, um, make sure you check out Sarah's channel. Join the Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description. Like I know Sarah's there. I don't know how often, but you know, there's so many great people and a lot of help. So.
Lovely. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you next time.